Okay, with cancer being as personal as it is, we can have the same diagnosis, even the same treatment, and our response to it may be totally different. You'll feel different than I'll feel, than somebody else will feel. So I put together this list of five tools for surviving cancer treatments that we put in and out of the toolbox. Some of these will work for you, some of them may not, but these are pretty basic things. So you have your diagnosis already, I'm going to assume. The oncology team is putting together your treatment plan. So it's time for you to put together your plan and your set of tools for the journey you've got coming up. Number one is make a list of questions. This is something I didn't do is make lists very well. I just tried to remember the questions and would get there. And in my mind, I had have a dozen questions and I would ask like two or three, get distracted and move on to something else and forget about everything else I wanted to ask until later. What kind of treatment am I going to have? Am I going to have surgery? If so, what kind of surgery am I going to have? How long is it going to take? Am I going to have chemo treatments? How many sessions am I going to have and how long is that going to take? Radiation treatments, how many and how long does that going to take? Um... What is the frequency? How often am I going to have to have chemo and radiation? Remember, these things vary wildly depending on the type of cancer you have, where it is in your body, and the way you handle these things, the way your blood work, and all these so many different characteristics. These are just good questions to ask. Something really important to ask is uh, how long are my treatments going to last? During my treatments, when I had a chemo day combined with radiation, it could easily be four to five hours. If it was just a straight-up radiation day, it could go anywhere from 20 to 40 minutes by the time I got checked in, get back to the room, and back out and in the car and on the way home. And another good question to ask is, what are some of the side effects of the chemo and radiation I can expect? Again, your oncology team is really going to know a lot more about this. So they can give you some heads up, things to be looking for. Is there any type of um, dietary restrictions, any kind of foods I can't, can or can't eat or drink? Um, <clears throat> that's something good to know. And will I need a some other devices like a peg tube or feeding tube or something like that. All questions we need to answer ahead of time and get prepared for. I've asked all my questions. Now I'm going to go to number two. Make a plan using that information. How am I going to get to treatment? Now that I know how often I'm going to have treatment, how many treatments I'm going to have, how do I get there? Am I able to drive myself? Should I rely? Should Am I going to have a family member to rely on? Uber? Uh, taxi? How does the hospital provide transportation? These are all things to plan out. And if you're going to be relying on somebody, such as a family member or a friend, plan it out with the people you're going to be relying on. Explain to them how often it's going to be. Prior to that stressful first day of treatment, you're going to want to take a test drive. Drive to your treatment center probably about the same time of day that you're going to be doing your treatments. Locate your parking. There's nothing more stressful in the world than getting there and realizing you can't, you don't know where to go, you don't know where to park. So if you're going to be driving with an Uber driver or a professional driver or van service, something like that, you can work this out ahead of time with them and maybe get a discounted rate because you'll be using them every day for an hour a day. Another thing to plan for is what happens if you can't work during treatment? This is kind of a serious issue, and you should discuss this with your company's human resources department and your supervisor. Your company may have some resources for long-term health care that might be available to you that you've may have never heard of before, but you won't know until you ask that question. And another thing to plan for is how are the treatments going to affect any other health issues that you have, such as high blood pressure or diabetes. You want to let these other specialists know what's going on. They may make a medication change based on your upcoming treatments. I know my endocrinologist changed my medication and my dosage radically because of my big change in diet that was getting ready to start and the fact that I could not swallow that diabetes pill while I was having throat cancer. So we changed over to a whole different thing. This is something to discuss with your specialist. The third tool in there is go ahead and discuss the cancer with your family and friends. You've been diagnosed with cancer. You've got the hard job ahead of you, all right? So you're not doing anybody any favors by keeping it as a secret. They're going to notice. I dropped 80 pounds in three months. People noticed. 
depending on what type of treatment you're getting, you could have a hair loss, you could have weight loss, you could have weight gain, just any number of things that can be going on, they're going to notice. So go ahead and let's explain to your family and friends what's happening now. Number four, supportive or palliative care. This care support that gets very little attention. We're also very concentrated on cancer treatment, cancer treatment, cancer treatment, that we don't pay a whole lot of attention to what's going on in the background. The palliative care doctor and the palliative care staff, they're there to support your quality of life issues during treatment. That's the doctor, that's the physician's assistant, the nurses who are going to give you the prescription or write you prescriptions for nausea medication, vomiting medication, pain medication, sleep medication to help you manage all of these things you've got going on because that's what they do. Get in touch with them, find out who they are. So the palliative care doctor understands exactly the side effects of your treatment plan and knows what type of medications you can take that won't interfere with your treatment and won't have a negative effect on you. The other part of supportive care that doesn't get a lot of talk is mental and emotional support and the drain this can take on you and your family. Find out about therapy options and support groups that are available in your area. This is pretty important post-treatment as well. There are more people with, with and have had cancer out there than you think. And these groups, like from the National Cancer Society, um, the American Cancer Society, National Health Service in the UK, all of these agencies all have contact with these groups to help provide you with support before treatment, during your treatment, and after treatment. Definitely look those people up. And self-care. This is number tool number five. It's important to take care of yourself. You alone know exactly what's going on. You know what hurts and what doesn't. You know how you're feeling inside and out. You know if you're feeling nauseous. You know if you're feeling like you're going to throw up. Headaches, etc. You know how you feel. We can't look at you and tell, doctors can't look at you and tell how you're feeling on the inside. If you're tired, rest. Take a nap. If you're bored, read. Do a crossword. Watch a movie. Try to stay mentally and physically active as much as you can. Even a five-minute walk outside around your yard will do wonders for you physically and mentally. Try to stay active physically and mentally. This will help you in the long run. Hope you have a great day. Talk to you later. See ya.